After water, tea is the most consumed beverage in the world. The value and importance of tea is magnified due to its popularity around the world as a health drink. The organized workforce connected to the tea industry exceeds 10 million. There are about 20 countries producing tea and among them India, Kenya, China, Indonesia and Sri Lanka are known to be leading tea producers of the world. However, it is unfortunate that the situation of plantation workers who are involved in the production of the health drink tea is brewed in an unhealthy and problematic atmosphere. Especially due to the globalization process, the structure of the industry evolved to bring about various problems for the core of the industry, its workers. Principally, as a result of globalization, new trends towards outsourcing and subcontracting have restricted opportunities for permanent work for many involved in the industry. The closure and abandonment of tea plantations due to currents of globalization has also encouraged subcontracting and outsourcing. These processes have paved the way for workers to be stripped of job security and social security. Furthermore, since contract workers are not provided statutory benefits, these workers are denied of remunerations as well. It is also noteworthy that an outgrower system is encouraged due to the process of globalization and this has resulted in the emergence of a new type of tea small growers where closed or abandoned plantations are cultivated by plantation workers without being given proper ownership of the land and the green leaf is sold to factories. What is unfortunate, however, is that the price of their green leaf is bought by factories at a pittance and most small growers have no option but to endure such problems because there is no fixed price for their leaves. On the other hand, since more than 52% of the workforce in plantations consists of women, there are practically no women in the upper levels of the managerial or trade union hierarchies. The exploitation of women under the trends of globalization are unprecedented. They are saddled with extremely strenuous work which extend for hours on end and in some cases are paid less than male workers. It is also unfortunate that women are the first to suffer when plantations face problems of closure or abandonment. Due to cultural manacles in the minds of people in tea producing nations, Women plantation workers have been made paralyzed in liberating themselves. The operations in plantations are still carried out according to patriarchal trends which further alienate women. Globalization and World Trade Organization procedures have paved the way for brand markets to profit in the global economy. And under such an atmosphere, tea producers obtain less earnings. The sole concentration on profit-making under global economic policies has made plantation managements ignore worker and social benefits which sustain healthy working conditions for plantation workers. Under these circumstances, traditional methods are being replaced by mechanization and other technologies since they are less expensive than relying on a large labor force which often could create problems for managements due to their various demands. Whatever profit that is made through the plantation industry is either accumulated by big companies which sell their produce under brand names or marketing companies which operate as in-betweens in the marketplace. The trickling down of profits to the lower levels of the hierarchy is extremely insignificant and the worst affected by this too are the workers. Those who labor long days in plantations daily earn about one US dollar per day and this amount is grossly inadequate to support the requirements of their families. A majority of them still live in shabbily constructed line rooms which do not even come close to providing them sufficient shelter and living conditions. Many plantation workers are still left ignorant of even the basic human rights and therefore they are unable to liberalize themselves. In some countries like Bangladesh, 
Sometimes estate workers are still treated as bond laborers. What is most unfortunate is that even with the processes of globalization and modernization, the stigma attached to those working in plantations has not been done away with. It is mainly due to this reason that the young generation is not encouraged to work in plantations anymore. Taking the above into consideration, it is no doubt necessary for building of solidarity networks between tea plantation workers and consumers of tea worldwide in order to negotiate and lobby for the betterment of tea plantation workers and small tea growers. In the year 2004, prior to the Mumbai WSF, the Global Tea Conference on the Tea Crisis was held in Lonavala, organized by the Center for Education and Communication India and the Institute of Social Development Sri Lanka. Trade union and NGO delegates from India, Sri Lanka, Kenya, Bangladesh, Tanzania, along with other professionals and researchers, participated in this conference. At the conclusion of the Lonavala Conference, a declaration was made on labor rights called the Lonavala Declaration. It was at this conference that the suggestion was made to declare an International Tea Day. This idea was subsequently adopted at the Global Tea Conference held in the WSF Mumbai. In the year 2005, at the tea conference held in Porto Alegre, Brazil, the participants proposed the 15th of December as the day of the international tea workers and small growers. As per this decision, the first International Tea Day was officially celebrated in New Delhi, India, organized by the Center for Education and Communication India, in collaboration with the Institute of Social Development Sri Lanka. Securing a sufficient wage for plantation workers, preventing closure of 2,000 tea factories in tea producing countries, provision of health, housing and education rights, preventing exploitation of women workers, and ensuring empowerment were the interests focused on at the first International Tea Day Conference which was held in New Delhi on the 13th and 14th of December 2005 in observance of the International Tea Day. It was with the intention of further addressing these issues that the second International Tea Day was celebrated recently in Kandy, Sri Lanka from the 13th to the 15th of December 2006. The Tea Day observations in Sri Lanka concentrated on the second International Tea Day Conference and a mass rally which were organized by the Institute of Social Development and the Center for Education and Communication in collaboration with the Sri Lankan plantation sector, trade unions and plantation sector social forum. The conference was held at the Hotel Topaz Candy from the 13th to the 14th of December and the mass rally was organized in Hatton the plantation capital of Sri Lanka on the International Tea Day, the 15th of December. Representatives from Sri Lanka, India, Kenya, Zambia, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Vietnam and Malaysia participated in the second International Tea Day conference to deliberate on various issues and problems related to tea plantation workers and tea small growers. The special message sent by the Head of State of Sri Lanka, His Excellency Mahinda Rajapaksha, bears testimony to the importance of this conference. I am pleased to send this message of greetings to the second International Tea Day being celebrated in Sri Lanka. With its long traditions in the tea industry, particularly in the production and supply of the world's finest tea, Sri Lanka is honoured at being selected as the venue for the second International Tea Day following the initial celebrations in India last year. The tea industry is an important part of the Sri Lankan national economy and is the source of employment to nearly one million workers. In addition, in, in additional, there are around 250,000 tea smallholders in Sri Lanka responsible for over 60% of the total tea production in the country. I am glad that the conference to mark the International Tea Day has brought together both trade unions and smallholders in the tea industry from India, 
Kenya, Bangladesh, Nepal, Malawi, Indonesia and Vietnam. It is also significant that the second International Tea Day Conference was graced by Honorable Sarat Ekanayaka, Chief Minister, Central Provincial Council, Honorable Tikiri Kobekadwa, Governor, Central Province, His Worship L.B. Aluvihare, Mayor of Kandy, Honorable S. Arul Sami, Minister of Industries, Sports, Women's Affairs, Rural Development, Estate Infrastructure, Hindu Culture and Tamil Education for the Central Province, and Honorable Shri Manohar Turki, Minister of State, Government of West Bengal, India. Furthermore, local and international trade union and tea small grower representatives, researchers and other specialists involved in the tea plantation sector contributed in making the second International Tea Day a success. At the conference, deliberations were made in order to work towards a living wage and sound social security for tea plantation workers and small growers. The main objectives of the conference was to form an international shadow commission for tea, which would pave the way for the profits earned by tea in the international market to trickle down to the lowest levels of the hierarchy in the tea industry and to work towards a commodity agreement in order to monitor and control the fluctuations in the international market for tea. The second uh, international tea day was observed in Sri Lanka this year uh, with the intention of uh, to create a commodity agreement as well as to create a, a, tea, a set on a tea national commission because through this what we are expecting is because today uh, there's a last two days the <coughs> delegates of uh, India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Vietnam and um, uh, Kenya and uh, Zimbabwe, they have submitted uh, what is happening in the global market in order to, um, uh, to um, gain the price. Because, because of the uh, fluctual situation in the global market, the workers are not in a position to get a permanent or a, a reasonable salary. Always when they are go for a negotiation with the employers, the employees used to say that uh, the tea product is dependent on the global market. Always it, is, it will uh, fluctuate. As a result of that, the employees are not in a position to uh, provide a better salary for the workers. Uh, not only here, even the, all the tea producing countries, including currently there are 20 countries are producing tea. But wherever you go and visit, the workers of the particular countries are the far below from the normal average uh, uh, wage which are given to the day laborers in those particular countries. One of the main problems in tea plantations, especially in India, was claimed to be the closure of tea estates and factories. The conference presentations conveyed that due to this reason, plantation workers have been deprived of their wages and statutory benefits. It is unfortunate that they have not even been provided with adequate compensation for their grievances. In India, so many estates are closed, more than one lakh workers are out of work. And uh, the workers agitated over it. Finally, parliamentary committee attached to Commerce Ministry of Government of India visited the area and recommended to take over the estate if employees are not willing to run the estate. So here also, we have suggested to take it as an uh, international demand, that is, closed estate be opened. I, otherwise, government should act and take over the estate. In India, already all political parties uh, consist in the committees of the parliamentary committee in two states. Uh, so I think that the conference um, Ellen Kandy is successful and I think that they, we, will, we will carry out the message through every, every country. In India, we are trying to pressurize our government, the state and central, so that it should close, it should, that all the closed and abandoned gardens should reopen in a specific period so that the we don't want that the many more uh, 
cost of life due to this inaction of the government, inaction of the employer. The representatives from Nepal and Vietnam too claimed that their countries are affected by the problem of closed and abandoned estates and factories and also expressed their concern with regard to poor wages and other facilities available to estate workers. The situation NTGL in Nepal Tea Garden Label Union has a legal authority in collective bargaining and affiliation in ILO. NTGL has a 35 plant label union and NTGL NTGLU group five border district and eastern region of it is disheartening to know that in Kenya, around 100,000 plantation workers have been stripped of employment due to the introduction of new technology and machines instead of human labor. Particularly in Kenya, they have introduced it and the High Court has ruled in favor of the use of machinery in picking. And consequently, more than 100,000 workers have lost jobs. So this is causing unemployment in an economy that's already uh, with the high levels of unemployment. But again, these companies that are doing this, uh, particularly multinationals, they are doing this as a cost-saving measure. But it's a short-lived problem because in the long run, the, uh, these companies will realize that the use of machinery will affect productivity and will also lead to a reduction in quality of the tea. So it's a short-term measure, but in the long run, they will realize that what their usage of machinery is not helping. It will actually cause more trouble in uh, the very long run. So the, the feeling is, as an objective, is that they should uh, uh, advocate for uh, the uh, elimination or removal or avoidance of the use of machinery in tea picking. Instead, we use human labor. Another factor that has led to the deterioration of the livelihood of plantation workers is the recruitment of laborers on contract and temporary basis in tea producing countries. Since the employees are not recruited on permanent basis, employers do not take responsibility for the well-being of these workers. So from the two days that we've had, we've looked at um, protecting the workers' rights and also to form a tea association especially in my country because we don't have it yet uh, for small scale producers. So we've also resolved that we need to work towards that and also to organize communities which are living around the, the estates or the plantations so that they are able to articulate and also be able to voice out on their rights. Yeah. And also to end casualization and also contractualization of the tea workers on the estates. And also the other issues that we came up with was the, like there's need to come up with a fixed labor conditions for the tea, tea workers. Special attention was drawn to ensure employment and other statutory benefits, especially for women working in plantations, because more than 50% of the plantation workforce consists of women. The second International Tea Day Conference, which was held for two days in Kandy, concluded with the pronouncing of the Kandy Sri Lanka Declaration and a work plan which aims towards working for the betterment of plantation workers and small growers nationally and internationally. The conference also decided to launch a poster and advertising campaign and holding dialogues with state, employer and worker representatives in order to smooth the crisis existing in the tea sector. It was also decided to work towards forming a mechanism or an overseeing body to ensure a reasonable wage which is sufficient for the labor efforts of plantation workers. Furthermore, informing all stakeholders in tea producing countries of the key decisions taken at the conference was also decided upon. The second International Tea Day Conference Action Plan further includes the production of a documentary film on the challenges faced by plantation workers and small growers in tea producing countries and publishing an electronic magazine and a booklet 
with the intention of keeping the consumer communities and the stakeholders informed. Requesting the International Labour Organization to look into the problems caused by recruitment of labour on casual or temporary basis, holding a worldwide one-day satyagraha in all estates, drawing legal attention to problems faced by estate workers, and fixing a minimum wage limit are some of the other decisions arrived at during this conference. At the end of the two-day conference, all the conference participants left for Hatton. They joined with trade union representatives and tea plantation workers who were at that time boycotting work in demand of a sufficient living wage and rallied together hoisting banners and posters which portrayed their grievances. The rally, which consisted of about 15,000 persons, advanced from the Hatton Town Hall to the DKW Hall where the Kandy Sri Lanka Declaration was read out to the audience. It is with great enthusiasm that the crowd adopted the declaration in one voice. The proceedings of the second International Tea Day observations concluded on this triumphant note while also extending the vision of working for the betterment of tea plantation workers and small growers by deciding to hold the next official Tea Day observations in Nairobi, Kenya. <laughs>